My eyes are watering so much. I swear I'm not crying in this video. I mean, I get emotional about Toga all the time, but like, it's just really cold out and my eyes won't stop watering. Hey everyone, I'm Ashley Van Cosplay. And today my video is gonna be walking through how I upgraded my pre-made Toga cosplay from mickcostumes.com to be something a little bit more unique in my own. I have gotten really into purchasing pre-made cosplays lately. I purchased some pieces before in the past, but never a full-blown cosplay. And it's just such a great resource, especially when you're not sure you can make everything your own or you think you might spend more time and money trying to make it yourself when you could just buy it when it already exists. Here comes the boy. Hello boy. <laughs> he was so excited. <laughs> Anyway, buying costumes is a totally valid form of cosplay. You don't have to make everything yourself to be a real cosplayer. And while I really love buying these pre-made cosplays, especially from mintcostumes.com, they're my favorite cosplay website ever. <laughs> I just sometimes receive them in the mail and take a look at some of the details on them and I'm always like, oh, I could totally upgrade this, I could do that. If I switch this out, it'll totally take it to the next level. Um, and while I've never really done that before or filmed myself doing it, I wanted to do this with this toga costume so we could definitely take it to the next level and make it really cool. So I actually got this toga cosplay secondhand from another cosplayer who originally got it from mickcostumes.com. So it was a really great deal. The Mick Costumes toga cosplay is honestly really great. It comes with so many accessories. It has the outfit. They even have a lot of versions on their website depending on what you're looking for. And this costume I think is just awesome. However, <laughs> there were a few things I needed to change just because of the fit and some other things that I just wanted to change just to make it more accurate and a little more cool. So my costume came with everything in the picture that I'll show here. And like I said, it's really cool. The thing I liked the most was the fact that it came with this scarf and it's pretty neat. Like there isn't, the teeth aren't actually like dimensional, but they have really cool shading. It's soft and flexible, which I love because I can actually fit it in my suitcase because I have so many armor cosplays that it's hard to bring to a convention. So this is just nice. The outfit itself was really great too. However, Ever. <laughs> the original skirt was like really short on me. Like I couldn't wear it anywhere. So I ended up purchasing just a nice pleated skirt off of Amazon, which I think looks better because it has more pleats in it. It's cuter and it fits me a lot better. Another thing I swapped out immediately was I actually got another cardigan. The one it came with was pretty great, but I really like the oversized look more. So I purchased one in an extra large when I usually wear like a smaller or medium. And I think it just fits the look a lot nicer. And I think the last thing that I upgraded so far was this is the scarf that came with the costume and like it works it's good it gets the job done but and this guy was only about five dollars on Amazon it's a little necktie and you put this under your collar so that'll be hidden and you got an actually like little nice bow and I thought it was just a nice upgrade so I did that another thing I wasn't really crazy about was this mask it's just kind of like the size of it is a little weird like like it's okay but it's just I didn't really like it being the blue color. I wanted it to be black and these like tubing pieces are just, they look a little goofy to me. So I knew I could make something a little bit better. So I just went ahead and bought this regular black COVID mask, which you need at conventions anyway. So it was a good investment. And this mask actually has three layers in it and a filter pocket, which is really nice. I wanted that because my plan is to actually cut into the first layer and add the tubing details to it. But because it has so many layers to it, it should be totally fine at a convention. Otherwise, I could put another mask underneath it, but I just really wanted to update it. And this is so much more comfortable. Like it goes around the ears instead of the back of the head, it'll be a lot easier. So we'll take a look at some of the supplies I bought so far. And to keep in mind, these supplies I'm about to show you are all household items. I did get them all on Amazon. I'll put links below, but you can find these products probably at your local dollar store or grocery store for a little bit cheaper. I was just kind of lazy, so I just wanted to order from Amazon. But but still on Amazon, it came out to under $30, which I think is pretty cool. So for starters, I have this tubing and this is what I'm going to use on the mask to give those details that she has. It's black, so I'll be able to kind of just weather it with some silver and it's gonna be hopefully <laughs> quick and easy. I also got some navy blue elastic because I needed to fix some of the straps on the costume. The leg pieces, they are just kind of, they're not a stretchy material and they're not gonna stay up on my thighs the way they are right now. Plus they're a little small, so I'm gonna swap them out with this and it should hopefully hold up pretty well. The biggest thing I wanted to work on was adding the like syringes that she has on either side of the, the scarf piece that has the tubing that goes down into the little like backpack jug jar things on her back. It's like the blood sucking machine. And I kind of already took these apart so I could test the size of it, but I got six 
condiment bottles, which look a little goofy now, but hopefully painted and weathered and with some other details, they'll look really cool on either side of the scarf. So I have six of those. I have uh, some fish tank tubing. <laughs> it's not super thick uh, and it's pretty flexible, so I think it'll be work really nicely and shouldn't get pulled out of the jars or the syringes on the props. So we'll see how that works. There's a lot of this and it was really cheap. And then finally, for the bottles on the back, they're not totally like accurate. Hello, it's me from my car. <laughs> so the bottles I just showed are not actually the ones I ended up using. I'm going to the dollar store right now to find something else because those did not work. So you'll see what I did use later in the video. All right, so I think that's everything. Um, I've got a wig too. I've got some other stuff I didn't show here like shoes, but we're gonna get into it and start this whole process and we'll take a look at the before and after when we're done. Let's get into it. So like I said, the leg pieces that came with the costume weren't really great. They weren't a stretchy material, so they just slid down on my leg as I walked and they just were not good. So I grabbed my navy blue elastic and started measuring it out on my thigh. I slid the elastic through the little bag pieces and then I just stitched the ends together so I could just slide it up my leg with no velcro. These looked so much better and didn't slide down. To get started on the new mask, I put it on my face and then marked with chalk where I wanted the tubes to go. I cut small holes in the mask, only going through the first layer, and then I started measuring out my tubing for each of these spaces. I cut the tubing long enough where the tension of it being in the holes actually kind of held it in place, but I still use glue anyway. I applied a lot of super glue to the end of the tube and then just put it into the hole and held it in place for it to dry. I did a quick fit check and I was happy with how it was looking. It looked a little goofy till I had all the pieces on. When all the tubes were in place, I took my favorite silver metallic acrylic paint and dry brushed it onto the tubes. Here was the finished soft and comfy mask. Now onto the blood sucking machine. This is what took the most time and work. So instead of the tea jugs we saw at the beginning of the video, I went to the dollar store and found these empty cleaner containers that were a lot lighter and worked better. Here I'm just cutting some 10 millimeter foam that could go between the jars. I used E6000 to attach it and let it sit overnight. The next day, I used a blade to cut two slits on each jug. This was where I was gonna feed my belt through so I made each slit as tall as the belt was wide. So then I was able to take the clip off of one end of the belt and feed it through these slits. This became my little backpack. Then I moved on to the syringes to get them ready for painting. I measured and cut out strips of 2mm foam that I could wrap around the condiment bottles. I attached it with hot glue. It was in this very moment that I burned my thumb really bad and have a huge blister. So yeah, hot glue is hot. Anyway, to seal the foam pieces, I used flex bond and just painted it on. I also painted flex bond on the foam piece between the two back jug thingies. Ignore the way these are already painted green. I tried to use acrylic paint, but I decided I wanted to spray paint everything. The spray paint was going to stick to plastic a lot better, so I'm glad I did this. But to get these ready for paint, I used masking tape to mask off all the bottles that were going to be silver, so I left only the part that was going to be green exposed. I taped them onto a Rosati's pizza box because it was on hand, but that way I could spray them without them falling over. It's also really cold outside, so I wanted to bring them inside once they were sprayed to dry. Here are the syringes and the back jars after being painted. Once that was dry, I then masked off the green part of the syringes so I could paint the rest silver. I always wear my best outdoor footwear. Everything was fully spray painted now. I just peeled off the masking tape and did some weathering. As always, to weather, I used some black paint mixed with a little bit of water and brushed it all over my props. I then wiped it off with a paper towel until I got the kind of like messy weathered look I really wanted. I did this process on the top and bottom and kept going until it was built up just how I wanted it. I had a really fun stabby knife prop that was really cheap and looks pretty cheap. It was just $4 on Amazon, so I decided to use the same watered down black paint technique on it, and later I did actually add some fake blood. 
I also used some silver metallic paint and dry brushed it onto the black areas just to make it look a little more worn down and weathered and like actual metal. As I got closer to being ready to assemble and everything, I needed to drill some holes in the bottom of these bottles so that I could insert the tubing into them. You can use a drill, but I just had my Dremel on hand. I just kind of shoved it in and I moved it around a little bit in the hole until it was wide enough to just barely fit the tube in nice and snug. Finally, I was able to stack these syringes into pairs of three, well I guess that's not pairs, into triples, whatever. I stacked the three on top of each other and just kept them attached with hot glue. I ended up adding a little bit of super glue in the middle too just to make sure it was nice and secure. At this point, I started to realize the scarf wasn't going to be able to hold the weight of these syringes on it. So I ended up cutting a long strip of 10mm foam that would be able to go on the inside of it and kind of force it to be pushed like outward a little bit. The tension kind of held it in place but it was just enough to add a little bit of structure to the scarf so it could hold my props. It was also removable so I could travel with it. I also wanted the syringes to be removable from the scarf in case I ever wanted to wear it without it and then also just make packing easier. So I decided to use some sewable velcro. I was just marking off where these props would go and then I would sew some velcro to the scarf and then attach the corresponding velcro to the back of the syringes and then they would be able to attach that way. The best way to attach the velcro to the syringes was to score the surface of the foam first and then use hot glue to attach it. This costume seriously has a lot of hot glue holding it together but it works really well here. The backpack was also ready to be assembled. I did what I did earlier by sliding that piece of belt through the loops I had on the back of it, and then it was pretty much ready to go. Here's everything all assembled. I didn't film anything with the tubing, but I just shoved it into the back of the syringes and sealed it off with hot glue. I cut the pieces really long and they just shoved right into the bottles. They're not attached with hot glue to the bottles or anything. That just allows me to take them apart and move and bend and not have anything break off. To take the costume to the next level, I decided to weather all the soft parts too. I dry brushed on some black really lightly and just kept building it up in all the creases and crevices on the pouches. I thought it made it look really cool. I did the same thing on the leg pouches and just really built it up on those seams. But I didn't stop there. I dry brushed some black onto the teeth on the costume. They already had some shading, but I thought it could be a little more intense. And it just made it look a little more dirty and grungy and matched the rest of the vibe I had. But I didn't stop there either. I actually weathered my entire cardigan as well. I started with that dry brushed black and just built it up. I really focused on where dirt might collect, and especially on the edges. And then I added fake blood. I used a really brown red and even mixed it with a little bit of black and a lot of water. I focused this on the edges of the sleeve and on the bottom of the cardigan. I also did a few splatters throughout it. It looked pretty intense and I honestly loved the effect. I also tapped on my brush when it had a lot of paint and water on it and that added some tiny splatters all over the place. It looked so cool. I thrifted my shoes on Poshmark.com. They were basically perfect. All I had to do was cut off the little tassels on them. I thought they looked amazing. Okay, so this wig needs a lot more help than I was expecting. Like, I knew it needs some work, but like, oh my lord. <laughs> Alright, so I made a little bit of progress on the wig. I didn't actually film it because I just didn't know how it was going to turn out. Um, but the biggest thing is because this wig, the base wig, is just kind of like a bob and the things clip on top of it, but I wanted to actually have it look like it's pulled up into these pigtails. So underneath these buns, I don't want to take them off because I was wrestling with them, but underneath the buns, I brought these hairs up into a rubber band because a rubber band holds wig hairs a lot better. But I brought them up into little ponytails here, and then I just clip this bun right over top of it. If I didn't leave this top layer out and have it fall over top of it, you can see straight through the wig. Like this is the wig hood underneath it. So that's not a good look. So I left this top layer out here and I'm gonna hairspray this so it doesn't go flying everywhere, but this just kind of fans out, covers that up. I'll get this organized how I want, but it's gonna cover up so you don't see the wig cap underneath.
So yeah, this wig needed quite a bit of work. The first thing I did for the buns was kind of pin down the parts that I wanted to be the actual bun and pull out the little hairs that I was going to make kind of like the little spiky flyaways. I'm really not that good with wigs, so I can't even pretend like I knew what I was doing. But I teased those little flyaway pieces and ended up using got to be glue, like hair glue gel stuff. And running it through it, kind of curling it with my fingers and making them the little spiky pieces I wanted them to be. I also used my hair dryer to kind of force the hairs in the direction I wanted and used my got to be hair spray this time and kind of froze those pieces in place. Honestly, the second I put my like head neck gear props on, it kind of messed up the wig a little bit anyway, so I did more work than I really needed to. <laughs> Obviously, I had to trim the bangs. I trimmed them to like right below my eyebrows. Um, I didn't film it because it was awkward. I also realized using super glue to keep some of those little flyaway pieces in place worked really well. This is so unflattering, but I don't like when my wig bangs are flat against my head, so I use a round brush and my hair dryer to kind of give them a little bit of curl and make them floofier. I trimmed and added some face framing layers to the side pieces. They're also really heavy and thick, so I used some like thinning texturizing shears to take out some of the hairs on them and make them a little fluffier. Alright, so it's been about, I guess like a week or so of me working on this costume. Granted, I only spent like a few hours here and there, and then the past two days I like seriously crunched on this thing. So I probably spent almost 12 hours the past two days. So like, math. Probably like over 20 hours on it this weekend, and then a little bit here and there to work on the wig and stuff. So it went pretty quick. I was able to knock it out really fast, and like it was really fun, so it went by really quick too. Um, I kind of ran into some, some challenges, but I think I'm really happy with what I came up with. I love the way this costume looks. Like, I didn't know how I would like myself as Toga, but I love it. <laughs> anyway, this was a super fun challenge to kind of work out a pre-made cosplay like this. There was some more parts that I kind of wanted to redo, like the little bags on the legs and on the belt, but I was kind of trying to stick to the original goal of updating a pre-made cosplay, so I wanted to use as much as the original stuff as possible. Uh, I think it looks really cool. It doesn't even really look like what it used to in the first place, so that being said, let's take a look at the before and after. for watching everyone if you'd like to see me do some more videos like this where I work on a pre-made costume and kind of make it my own let me know or if there's anything else you want to see please let me know in the comments it really helps to know what everybody would like to see more of if you also have any other characters or costumes you could see me doing this type of thing for again also let me know I would love to work on some more stuff in the future so be sure to follow me over on Twitter Facebook Instagram YouTube and TikTok I'm Ann Cosplay on everything see you guys next time Oh,